Okay, today's little mini lecture is on gas exchange in the leaf. Um, I have to say I had to hunt through a number of cupboards to find a decently coloured in leaf model. So in class you probably made this model of a leaf and uh, hopefully coloured it in almost as beautifully as this one is. So, uh, how is the leaf adapted for gas exchange? Well the first thing you need to be able to do with the leaf is to be able to label it. So you need to know, I'll just work my way from top to bottom really, uh, waxy cuticle on the top to prevent water loss so that's a, an adaptation for uh, terrestrial existence, living on land. Then we've got a transparent layer of epidermal cells. So epidermis is um, the stuff that surrounds all of the plant uh, organs and so we've got epidermis at the bottom as well and helpfully this person's coloured in both of those layers yellow and has realised that because this is a 3D model that the upper epidermis will look like that so these are epidermal cells as well, So because it's 3D. Lying just underneath the epidermal cells, we've got the palisade layer. These are long, thin cells. Um, I always imagine them a bit like a sort of a, uh, you know when you buy those trays of Coke cans, they look a bit like that. So they do have little sort of gaps between them if you look at them from the top. Um, so, as far as adaptations are going, the leaf, the light is entering through these transparent cells, the epidermal cells, and the first layer they hit are the mesophyll, the palisade mesophyll cells. Now these are chock-a-block with chloroplasts to maximise light harvesting, and slightly better than that, they, the chloroplasts can actually move closer up to the surface of the leaf where there is obviously most light to be harvested. We then move down through the leaf and we've got the spongy mesophyll layer. Spongy so called because it's got these huge air spaces in them. Now these cells, the spongy mesophyll cells themselves, this person's coloured them in green to show that they photosynthesize as well. So light that passes through the palisade mesophyll cells can be harvested by the spongy mesophyll cells. So, function of the uh, airspace, if you look at what it's connected to, these two cells down here, which are coloured green, so they're in the lower epidermis, which is yellow, and these two are coloured in green. These are also photosynthetic cells, and these are guard cells, and in between them is a hole and that hole is called a, a stoma, plural stomata. So the purpose of the uh, air spaces is that the gases are going to diffuse to the gas exchange surface, which are these cells in the mesophyll layer. So all of this, um, I'm just, just drawing it, I feel a bit, a bit bad really, this isn't my work. <laughs> Yeah, but I'm still going to draw on it. So, all of the surface of these mesophyll cells is actually the gas exchange surface of the leaf. So it's all the way around. So we can see that, you know, you've got lots of cells. Cells are quite small, so we've got quite a big surface area. And it's all in contact with these air spaces. So, remembering that air from the insects video that it's much easier to diffuse through air than water and certainly than through a cell which is quite a dense medium. These air spaces actually um, facilitate the diffusion of gases to the gas exchange surface. So we've got carbon dioxide coming in, diffusing through to the photosynthetic cells and being used up in photosynthesis and in photosynthesis oxygen returned into the air spaces building up there and then diffusing out through the uh, stoma between the two guard cells. So um, the downside of that of course is if you need your stomata open to let some gases in for photosynthesis 
you're also going to be letting water out and that's just an inevitable consequence of having an open space just like for insects really you know they've got if they've got their spiracles open great they can do gas exchange with the uh, atmosphere and they can the diffusion can happen into the gas exchange surface same for plants but then they're losing water so again they have adaptations to cut down water loss so not only do we have this thick waxy cuticle that our lovely guard cells can open and close this pore in the middle. So this, I'm just going to colour it in orange, in the middle, is actually a hole. So if you were walking across the lower surface of the leaf, uh, if you were tiny enough, you would walk, 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 whoops, fallen through a hole and straight into those air spaces and you'd be kind of bouncing on the palisade mesophyll at the other side and you'd have to climb back out and go a bit further along. So these are these are just holes. That's going to be important later on. And you'll see that these sorts of guard cells are sort of pretty banana shaped and they've got this very thick layer here, this very thick cell wall just there next to the hole. And again, significance of that in a later video. So Remember, the leaf's photosynthesizing, it needs to be big, broad, big surface area to catch lots of light. It's got uh, these holes at the bottom, the stoma, to let the gases in. But it also, of course, needs to get water in and it needs to get the sugar away from the leaves. So, in the leaf we've got vascular tissue, this is a leaf vein. Uh, they come in and branch off a midrib and you may have drawn the midrib when you've done your drawing of a leaf and the phloem tissue is at the bottom of the leaf those are quite narrow tubes and you'll be doing structure of phloem when we do plant transport and then the wider tubes at the top are the xylem so xylem are bringing water and phloem are taking away sucrose from the leaf so the plant's making glucose, converting it into, into sucrose and transporting it away. In the meantime, water is coming up from the soil and moving by osmosis from cell to cell. Okay, so I think that's about it for adaptations. And we're going to do sort of how this adaptation for reducing water loss, how that works uh, with the stomata opening and closing next.